What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Not really too much to discuss. You know, it is the weekend, but we'll go ahead and do a little bit of TA. Not quite feeling 100% yet. Uh, still feel a little off, not going to lie guys, but it is what it is and we're going to keep on pressing. Anyways, if we go ahead and take a look at Ethereum on the daily, <clears throat> we're already meeting our short-term targets uh, that we were talking about a few days ago, the purple 55, the red 89. I am still under the, um, I guess, bias that we are heading to the top side of the range coming here at uh, 2347. Uh, don't get it messed up though, right? Uh, we are not in a reversal on a daily time frame whatsoever. The pressure is definitely onto the downside, but of course, you know, the market ebbs and flows and we could definitely, definitely go ahead and uh, have a little bit of short term upside, which is looking like what, you know, we're getting. Uh, we definitely do have a daily, or not, not daily, but a lower lows on the daily. Uh, <clears throat> and honestly, the volume on these candles aren't really too impressive. We took a look at CMEs yesterday, so go ahead and check out yesterday's video if you want a more in-depth analysis on that. But uh, the volume on there was pretty consistent, but nothing that was like, hey, this is the low that I was really looking for after something uh, pretty aggressive like we've seen for the past two months. And so I am quite cautious of this move. <clears throat> Anyways, what I'm looking for now, uh, that's going to make me like, macro uh, maybe not macro i think macro is too strong of a word but uh, a little bit longer term uh, bullish is if we go ahead and get a daily candle closure above this candle's wick high coming in on 7 july at 24 10. we achieve that i'll be looking for a little bit more upside not immediately in fact i'd be expecting the complete opposite after we go ahead and close the daily candle uh, above 2410, I'd be looking for a attempt to go ahead and put in a higher low because even though we are having a short term upside, we have no type of uh, low structures um, have been put in, you know, above about $2,000. So we would definitely need to go ahead and accomplish that first because we do not have all the ingredients for an uptrend. You need higher highs, higher lows, and well, we have none of that. So yeah, the, the trend is definitely to the downside at the moment, to say the least. Uh, you, if you're new here, you may be wondering, hey, what's this box down here? This is a very uh, attractive price point for me. Seeing as the 377 is coming in right around there, and uh, a lot of the higher term time frames have uh, area, significant like areas in line with about $1,400 to $1,500. And so if price action does come there, you know, I think that is that would be a very attractive price. I think I could. I don't think I need to really explain that anymore. You know what I'm gonna be doing in that area. You feel me? But this is not investment advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But now you know what's up. If the if the boxes are to the downside, I like those areas. That's all you gotta know. Anyways, let's see. Is there anything else that we really want to talk about on the daily? Stokes look really good entering the bullish control zone. So if they do get in there, I'll be. I, I like that a little bit more. Our size looking just fine. Yeah. We'll go ahead and drop it down to a 12 hour. 12 hours looking pretty good. In fact, I was expecting more so a, a pullback after hitting the 12 hour 377 and maybe consolidate between the purple 55 and the blue 377 right here. Obviously, this trend to the upside is a bit more bullish than I had previously anticipated. And it's looking like we are going to be putting in a move towards the 200 exponential coming in at 2239. Now, be advised though that <clears throat> if we close anything like we have right now, this would kind of be a high structure uh, or a can this candle formation would be uh, equivalent to or compared to, uh, I don't know, a candle formation that's usually printed as a top. There we go. Um, lost my words for a minute. Anyways, uh, obviously, if it just prints this way, like it's not a top in and of itself, it needs to be confirmed. And so how would that occur? Well, we need to have to, we would have to go ahead and take out this candles wick low. And then if that were to occur, I would expect that pullback to the purple 55 coming in at $2,068. Uh, obviously a lot has to happen before there. And we have four, well, pretty much five hours left before this candle closes. And well, a lot can happen in five hours to say the least. Um, I do think we need to go ahead and talk about where CME's closed, right? Um, this is a very important one. CME closed at $2,024. So let's go ahead and recreate that. Uh, it's just a little bit under the purple 55, more like the green 21. Um, <clears throat> the reason why I bring this up is because typically how it happens is where CME is closed on Friday, uh, spot price action will usually come back down and hang out around that area when CMEs are about to open again. So 
if you guess that within probably like what is it a little over 12 hours we're gonna see price action probably have a pullback or at least you know have high, high probabilities of that occurring I, I do think that's kind of in the favor <clears throat> or I think that's kind of whatever you, you understand what I'm trying to say you feel me <laughs> like I think price action is gonna pull back to where you know CME's closed at so that way we could go ahead and open up anyways take a look at the six hour um, wait, hold on. One more thing on the 12 hour. Let's see. Yeah, we don't have any lows in this structure. N no lows whatsoever. And so we honestly can play around a lot here. This is a pretty big range to be fair. Uh, anything, anything above about 1751 is just going to be another higher low on the 12 hour on the 12 hour y'all. I mean, well, I guess, you know, even on a daily. Yeah. <laughs> what was I thinking? Anyways, yeah, so any low that is put in above 1751, that is all good, son. Like, it's just a higher low. And that's honestly kind of probably what you would want to see here for uh, a little bit more continued upside, if I have to say so myself. <clears throat> six hour Stokes looking really good. Oh, yeah, so I think the six hour is a little bit more, uh, more telling right now. We do have this topping formation that we printed, you know, uh, at 03 this morning for my for myself in Japan. <laughs> And so if we do take out the wick low of this candle uh, at around like 2127, I would look for a move back down to at least the base over here at around like $2,018. Now, this is where things get a little tricky. Uh, usually when you have like a breakout candle of this like sort and you see price action come back near the base of that candle, typically that means like that's not really the best sign that you want to see. Uh, so if that were to happen, I would honestly expect targets to go a little bit lower, uh, maybe even down to, you know, 1871-ish. No, nah, I'd say maybe like 1830 region. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, again, big ranges we could play right here. Uh, although this is looking like a pretty solid consolidation, I would be kind of skeptical. If we do close, though, a uh, six-hour candle above $2,200, I would look for that extension to the top side of the range coming in at like 23 24 A lot of possibilities here. Stokes are looking really good in this region again they they are crossing down mind you but like i've told you guys for the past like few days now as long as they're in the overbought or oversold region i don't care what the stokes are doing they could go up down doesn't really matter preferably sideways though that's what i really care about <laughs> but um the next signal i'm looking for the stokes is if they exit the overbought region when they do that i'd be looking for a little bit more uh continuation to the downside but as of right now this is all good to me don't really care about a cross down <clears throat> anything else no i think that's pretty good four hour four hours looking pretty all right right here again see and this is what i was saying like if you take a look at a four hour i don't really care what goes on in these regions just because like look at this we had two cross downs well three if you count this one three crosses to the downside and well nothing really like crazy even happened during that region that's why i think the more favorable signal is when you actually leave the overbought region uh, even then, like, I'm not thinking, like, too bearish when you do initially leave the overbought region because you're still in the bullish control zone, which is this area at 65 and above. Okay. <clears throat> I think that just uh, needed a little bit of clarification. I do think we have a little bit more in this rally, at least one more move up, maybe to about 22.57 if I'm looking at the four hour. After that, I w I'm going to be leaning more towards that pullback. I really think that's what's going to happen here. RSI looking fantastic, though. And we're, all, and we're out here consolidating in the uh, bullish control zone. I mean, I can't hate it. I can't hate it. But I would be cautious when we contact the 4-hour uh, 377. I think that just about wraps up Ethereum on the daily, though. Let's go ahead and move on to Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, Bitcoin's already pretty much testing the top side of the range. Wow. Okay. So we actually do have a lot to discuss on Bitcoin. Mind you, uh, the first thing that I care about for, you know, until it stops working are the daily stokes. Uh, these bad boys have caught every single turning point since the start of this year. And they're pointed to the upside. And so I got to continue with my bullish bias, well, to the upside, as long as that is happening. Now, that doesn't mean we can't have a little bit of a short-term pullback like we were talking about on Ethereum. I do think we, you know, get one. Because CME has opened up at like 32.2 or closed at 32.2. And so <clears throat> where would that kind of fall in line? Well, probably close to, you know, 
the yellow 10 and the green 21 coming in right about here. So we could definitely play out this range between the 21 and the purple 55, which I do think is more likely to occur, maybe for like a day or two. But yeah, uh, what I'd be looking for now is if we could go ahead and get a closure above the purple 55, I would look for a move back up to the red 89 coming in at 38.150. Now, we are getting into some uh, interesting areas, and I'm going to go ahead and talk more about the uh, relevancy and the cautious areas that we need to be worried about as price action goes price action goes ahead and extends upwards. But <clears throat> that's not going to be for today's video. Catch that like tomorrow or uh, Tuesday or something. So stick around is what I'm saying. Anyways, just like with Ethereum, Bitcoin also has a very attractive region, which does have a lot of eyes put on it. Uh, this is also in line with the one spot 272 and the one spot 414 if you do a Fibonacci retracement uh, on this. And so I do like that uh, region and it's coming in also at the $19,000 to about $22,000 region. So it is, a, it is a fat boy region, not going to lie. But any, any kind of price action, if price action dips down in that region, I do think it's going to be bought up pretty aggressively. Now, we are not guaranteed... Uh, not guaranteed anything in the markets. So let's, let's lay that out there first. But what is the likelihood of this coming down? Uh, well, seeing as we had that bear trap just like, you know, almost a week ago, uh, I think right now the odds are pretty slim. Mind you, this is still a daily downtrend. And so the odds aren't like super slim. I mean, like in the short term, they're really slim. Over the medium to long term, um, it's kind of relevant, I'm not going to lie. Uh, as long as we're putting in a downtrend on the daily, I think the odds over the medium to long term of us coming down in this region are pretty significant. Uh, obviously, because, you know, the trend is your friend. <clears throat> but what was I going to say? I do think price action gets really bought, uh, gets bought up pretty aggressively. Um, throughout the history of Bitcoin, usually you only like wick down to your like prior all time highs after a breakout. You don't typically like, you know, close down there and you know live healthily down there so i do think it would be a very quick aggressive move bought back up um and as long as we're above about twenty six thousand um, dollars i'm not really looking for this play to get too much action especially with the short-term upside move that we're getting right now what i'd be looking for to get a little bit more bullish on this we kind of already talked about it the purple 55 which is also coming in line with this prior high and that's what that's the reason why i'm like you know i'll, I'll extend those targets to the upside once we get that i don't think now is the time though anyways um i think we kind of really like put this one to rest let's go ahead and check out the four hour yeah, four hours looking really good for the first time in a minute. The four hour actually looks like something I care about or would like to talk about. Uh, already testing the 377, so that pullback might be coming a little bit sooner than we expected. Again, Stokes are looking super good in this region. I'm looking for these bad boys to leave, so as long as they're floating up here, I mean, doesn't really matter to me. I do think uh, RSI is getting pretty, uh, pretty high in this region, probably to some notable like toppy areas if I have to guess. We actually haven't seen RSI this high or relatively within this region since the uh, <clears throat> prior high on uh, 14 April, uh, at least on a four hour. And so, I mean, that's probably not the best way to be using, well, never mind. I think that is a pretty decent way to be using RSI to be fair. But yeah, RSI is getting pretty high. Um, I don't usually trade that way. I mean, that is more of a like uh, mean reversion kind of technique. I haven't put any of those to test, to study or anything. Um, just right now, I'm strictly trends, still learning how to uh, code these bad boy strategies in Python. And so, yeah, but once I get started, man, once I get started, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and I'll share those uh, statistics with you. But that is one way you can utilize your RSI, but I don't think you guys came here for that. And so let me just stop rambling a little bit Four hours looking pretty good. I would expect a pullback if we pulled back. Um, and if we did get a pullback, I would expect a move down to about the red 89 or in the purple 55. Let's see. <clears throat> Anything else? Well, what, how would I go ahead and determine that we're probably having a pullback? If we close any four hour below the 200 exponential coming in at around like 33.5, I would expect those downside targets to go ahead and get initiated. Um, anything else? No, DMI ADX even on four hours is crazy. Well, it's not really crazy. It's at 57. Not too crazy. It could really go ahead and keep going for a minute, but it's looking really healthy. Let's see. All right, let's go ahead and move on to Telecoin. The one thing that everybody comes here for. Telecoin already testing. Man, 
yesterday's analysis. Telecoin always is like, it's like, yo, we're going to go ahead and just, you know, fuck what you say. We're going to do our own thing. You don't think we're going to get here in like a day? <laughs> Guess what? You're fucking wrong. Yeah, so we got that move up to the purple 55 and the red 89. Got a bit of a sell-off off of it. Uh, not too bad. Uh, <clears throat> I would have really wanted to see a daily closure above both of these moving averages, but all good. Doesn't really matter. Mind you, this is a good meaty move right here, and we did travel probably like what? Um, almost 100% if I have to guess, right? Am I right? Over 100% if we're talking about a week-to-week -week basis, but if we're talking about where we're at right now, over 100% still. So yeah, crazy move, crazy move. And if you're a trader, man, this is a, this is the juiciest thing to probably trade. Um, <clears throat> anyways, mind you, for any talks of long-term reversal, ver reversal on Telecoin, we need to get back above three cents. We are still uh, quite a bit of ways away from that. But, um, so yeah, don't, don't be expecting it. Meanwhile, we are possibly gonna get a change in trend on the Stokes, change of trend on the Stokes. <clears throat> what I'd really be looking for is this next candle closure. If we go ahead and confirm uh, the Stokes pretty much at this level, I would be, I'd, I'd take that as a change of behavior. Now, we were saying yesterday that Telecom was likely to be like our canary in the coal mine, essentially. And it was when uh, we were heading down uh, around this region. And so I really like to uh, see how Telecoin is doing. Because if it does break this long-term trend on the Stokes, um, I would expect more continuation of the upside. And that kind of tells me that things are changing in the crypto space. Because <clears throat> I don't know, Telecoin is just like easier to read. And so that's really like the fundamental thing that I would be looking for as like the big like, whoa, sh like, dang, that's crazy. Anyways, um, so yeah, tune in tomorrow to see how that happens. Or you can just look at it yourself. Up to you, bud. Anyways, should we go down to a four hour? The four hours looking absolutely crazy. Just crazy. Um. I'll leave it at that. I really don't like how this one's trading on the four hour. Uh, that and I'm really tired. I really don't feel like doing this. Sorry guys, to be fair, you know, I do these every day. I'm feeling a little burnt out, not gonna lie, but it's what I'm here for, it's what I signed up for. Um, it is what it is, you know, I'm here for y'all. Uh, let me show myself for a little bit. Give this video a like or something, you feel me? Uh, subscribe if you've been around a minute. If you still need some time, I understand. Take your time, watch a few more videos, whatever. Anyways, uh, enough of that. Ethereum Classic. Now this one's actually looking really good. So combine this with Telecoin. Woo, you got a, you got a pretty decent picture right here. We uh, close above the purple 55 and the red 89. Nice on the daily. I do love that. And it's looking like we just got done um, getting a backfill on the last daily candle. I mean, it's met our condition, man. I got to target the top side of the range. I think I kind of think Telecoin is going to move up to the top side of the range. Now that is like a moon boy shot. Uh, a moon boy expression, I'm not going to lie, but at least for Telecoin, sorry guys, not not talking about Ethereum Classic, sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, just kind of a moon boy shot, you know, that's like over another like 100% move, but I definitely think it has it in it if Ethereum Classic is making an attempt to the top side of the range as well. Typically, these guys move side by side. Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, anyways, Ethereum Classic, sorry. But, you know, I'm just trying to put the bigger picture all into like one view, you feel me? Anyways, if we go ahead and get a daily candle closure above this candle's wick high coming in at $61.62, that would, you know, be part of the recipe of a, you know, reversal. Well, that would actually complete the recipe for a reversal on Ethereum Classic. We would then have higher highs and higher lows. And so this is all looking really good right now for, you know, well, the general crypto space. And if the general crypto space is looking like this juicy right now and so constructive, I kind of got to, you know, lean that Bitcoin is probably going to pull through here. Just looking at the temperature of the rest of the market, you know. <clears throat> Stokes pointed up to the top side, very good. Uh, mind you, I mean, we are we haven't put in a low anywhere except for, you know, back at $38 and Telecoin, Ethereum Classic. These guys have stupid wide ranges, even Ethereum right now. And so it is going to be pretty a pretty decent move when this thing or when these things kind of come back down to create or attempt to create another higher low. So please practice good risk management, yo. Um, read some books or something, you feel me? Like 
have a real strategy because you'll get cut up, man. You'll get cut up. But um, everything is starting to kind of shape up. And I think we are back on track for our target of, you know, this fall. Things kind of like pulling through. So that is very nice to go ahead and see. <clears throat> Anything else I really want to talk about on Ethereum Classic? No, it's looking like continuation. You know, this one's an easy one. Now, Cardano, Dot, and Link. I have not gotten anyone to be like, yo, I really want to see this. So I'm legit thinking about cutting it. But this makes up like, I don't know, what was it like 20% of my views? So if I stop doing that, like, is it really that beneficial? I don't know. I'm also not getting paid for this. So does it really matter? I'm asking the real the real questions right now. You feel me? Like, do, does it? I mean, I'm doing this for free, so it's kind of like whatever I want to do. Um, we'll, we'll continue. We'll continue, though. Anyways, for now, for now. Unless somebody leaves a comment or something. I don't know. Anyways, Cardano. Um, it's, it's itching to go ahead and make this attempt to the Purple 55 and Red 89 coming in over here at $1.34. This is looking pretty good, man. Looking really good, honestly. Uh, mind you, daily downtrend. Let's not forget daily downtrend. So it's not looking that great but uh is this move to the upside is looking like it wants to go ahead and continue further um if we do go ahead and get a daily candle closure above the red 89 i would look for a move to the top side of the range at a dollar and 46 cents mind you our last low was at a dollar and five cents so as long as we're living healthily above there i mean we're all good we're all good <clears throat> Is there anything else that really needs to be talked about on Cardano? No, Cardano is really easy. I'm not going to lie. Like, it's boring, but it's easy. And it typically only takes me like a minute. That's why I just grouped all these bad boys together. Anyways, if we take a look at Polkadot. Polkadot's finally not getting a sell-off from the 21. So that is like a relief for once. <clears throat> so if we do get a daily candle closure above the 21, I would drive targets up to the purple 55. Um... It might prove me wrong like Telecoin and do it in a day, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think it's going to probably take, you know, a week or something. Also, Polkadot has the same, like, regression going on on the stochastics. And so if we go ahead and, you know, have these stochastics also break this regression or trend line. I'm just being fancy, you feel me? Um, but if we go ahead and have a break this trend line, I would be looking for more continuation of the upside. And I would expect a new phase of this market to kind of um, take hold, if you ask me. <clears throat> and so, yeah, because these, this thing has been going back ever since this whole downside, like this move to the downside started and, you know, just showing you the trend as of right now. And so if it breaks that trend, it's telling you things are changing. I'm sure you guys did not need that explanation, but who knows? There you go. You got it. Uh, anyways, anything else on here? Nope. If we take out this... Uh, $11 target right here, uh, pretty much where our last low was. I would look for further extension, probably down to like nine bucks. Uh, Polkadot is the only crypto out here, I think, that actually has decent volume along the prior low. Um, yeah, it is the only one. So that is something to know. And it's not really on the low, which is, it's actually on a really weird candle, but it's decent volume nonetheless, meaning that someone was out here actually buying it up. Um, it's not as big as I hope to see, but I mean, in the context of, no, 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 this is actually some pretty decent volume. And now that I zoomed out a bit, like it's, it's really good. Um, so yeah, that's the only one though. So I don't know if it's some pumpy dumpy stuff or what, which I don't think so because polka dots actually one of the more attractive and well, um, well put together charts. Uh, it actually doesn't have the same look as a pump and dump. If I get a chart that has more price history, I'd be able to show you guys, but I really don't feel like doing that right now. Link is looking like it wants to get that move to the purple 55 right now. Um, <clears throat> again, I'd be looking for confirmation with the daily candle closure above the green 21, just like Polkadot. Um, and then as long as we are living above about $13.87, so the prior low, we should be good. If we even wick below that low, I'd probably look for further extension back down to about $11. Meanwhile, we are still in a daily downtrend. I've been saying this on like all assets. We do have a little bit of short term up, but please, boys, girls, because I know 40% of my audience are females. So what's up, guys? Or I mean, girls. Fucked it up. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, so, you know, don't know what I was getting at. Who cares? I'm out of here. See y'all tomorrow. <laughs> On that note, I'm done. <laughs>